On the other side of this sketch pad is a drawing that took me 21 hours to complete. And before I reveal it to you, let me show you how I did it. Now this video is going to be the first in a line of many, where I explain some of the thought processes that go behind my drawings so that you guys can hopefully pick up on a couple of things to use in your artwork as well. And with that said, let's get straight into my drawing of the Lego Boba Fett. So the first challenge was picking a pose to draw him in, and I really like this gun across the chest as it looked really compact, and also turning him three quarters and sticking his leg out makes it look more dynamic and 3D. And I could then start working on the sketch, which I did in the same way that I would with any other drawing that I do using the grid system, as it's really nice and accurate, I find it's a lot quicker and just easier than doing it freehand as I don't make as many mistakes. But something I did struggle with on the sketch was figuring out where the visor needs to go because the black and the red on the front panel on the helmet is just so dark it's hard to distinguish between the two, so I kind of made it up, making sure to keep the lines parallel with the sides of the helmet, and yeah, it ended all right, and I don't really know why I'm complaining. Now I've done the sketch, it's time to move on to the alcohol markers, and the green on his helmet was actually quite difficult to do, as it's very light, and when you first put alcohol markers down, they're a lot darker than when they're dry. So I was using these greens thinking, oh, have I messed this up, and put a dark green in an area that it shouldn't be, but luckily it, when it did dry, it was a lot lighter, and everything was okay. I also made the red around his visor a lot lighter than it is on the figure, as it's easier to distinguish between these two areas, and it has a lot more punch to it than it does on the figure so yeah it's a lot better this way but apart from those two things it was pretty much just plain sailing just jotting in the basic color and tonal variation of his armor ready for the colored pencils which is up next now when doing the colored pencil work i always start at either the leftmost point or at the head this is so i don't end up working over myself and smudging the drawing the head is also the most important part and if you mess it up you may as well just bin the drawing because there's just no hope now before we discuss how i use the colored pencils i just want to admit to an absolute blunder whilst doing this drawing I got a comment on one of my progress videos saying, what about the rangefinder or poncho? And I thought, yeah, you're right. So I added them in only to realize that yes, he does have a rangefinder, but no, the book of Bubba Fett, Bubba Fett, doesn't have a poncho. So now I've got a hybrid between the classic and the new armor designs. But honestly, I don't really care because this is looking pretty cool. And with that said, let's get back to the colored pencils. I first take a very good look at the reference image and then at the colors that I have and pick out any that I think are present in the photo. And it doesn't necessarily matter if you don't end up using some of them. I then split them into dark, light and intermediary color categories. I could then use the darkest colors to jot in the shadows, the lightest colors to add in the highlights and the intermediaries to fill the space in between. The next task is to blend these areas together. Now let's stop right there. After recording this video, I realized that I could have explained what I'm about to say a lot better. So I actually made a short about it and I explained blending colored pencils probably about three times better in a third of the time. So I'm gonna show you that short instead and then we'll get straight back into the video. Here is the simplest way to blend colored pencils. Imagine you have two boxes, one with a darker and one with a lighter color. You just need to go over the intersection between the two with something called an intermediary. Now this is a color that is lighter than the darker color, but darker than the lighter color. And once you've done this, you need to go back over where the boxes were with the original colors. And as I said, this is a foundation for how I did the entirety of them by just establishing all these different areas and blending them together how I just showed you. But the key to making your drawings very impressive is to add lots of weird details everywhere, things that don't necessarily fit in with the general pattern, like little random shadows, reflections, even scratches, just things to make it look a bit more interesting than just a soulless surface. So here you go, my realistic drawing of the Lego Boba Fett minifigure. Now I appreciate we digressed into some very general topics towards the end there, but if you have any specific questions about this drawing, please don't hesitate to ask them down in the comments. I've just realized I forgot to mention the materials I used today, so I'll just leave them down in the description. And also in the description, I'll have signed limited edition prints. And if you did enjoy this video and found anything useful in it, please hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more. And as always, thank you for watching.